I have been looking at this Gigabyte B550 motherboard for quite a while, but since I'm overloaded with the different kind of videos, I didn't really want to buy it. And then one of my subscribers just to all of a sudden decided to buy me one for review. Right now I don't even have a Ryzen CPU to test it with, but nevertheless I'm very thankful and let me take it out of this huge box and see what we have got inside. So, the motherboard arrived in a brand new state and its original box. Uh, let's take it out from the motherboard box and see what else we have. In here we'll have some basic accessories, IO shield, a pair of SATA cables, another pair of SATA cables and some manual. So, this is Micro ATX B550 AM4 motherboard from Gigabyte. This is not a regular consumer motherboard. This motherboard is aiming itself at small servers or maybe NAS devices. We have the standard layout of the socket of the four memory slots, but here we have uh, six SATA ports. Additionally, we have a PC Express X16, and I believe it can be bifurcated to X8X8 or X8X4X4 or 4X4. Additionally, we have here one PC Express X4, and this one is not blocked at the end, so you can install full sized PC Express X16 cards. Over here we have a single M.2 slot, which is a bit unfortunate. I would want to have here two M.2 slots. On the rear I.O. we have very basic output. We have VGA from some sort of IPMI. I believe it's this uh, SPIT, but it is marked with this sticker, so I can't read which exact model it is. Then we have a COM port, uh, three network jacks and two USB 3 ports. This is another thing that I really dislike, only two USB ports at the back. So if you need to connect keyboard, mouse and a USB flash drive, you need to use one of these USB 3 headers or USB 2 headers if we have any. For example, this one over here, but I don't see any USB headers for the front panel. USB 2 headers, I mean. Then we have five, no, it's actually six, three over here, two over here, and one over here, four pin fan connectors. So your server could have enough fans to take off. The VRM here looks pretty pathetic, but I think it will be just enough for something like Ryzen 7 5700 non-X. Finally, let's take a look at the back side of the motherboard. Maybe we have an M.2 slot over there. Sadly though, we do not have an M.2 slot here, it's just pretty clean here. This looks uh, like a BIOS chip, but I'm not sure, and some extra microchip over here. So the motherboard, in terms of uh, consumer features, is pretty pathetic, but at the same time it might be very interesting for people who are assembling small servers or NAS devices with lots of storage, because Ryzen CPUs support ECC memory, not ECC registered, but just ECC unbuffered memory. The motherboard has PCI Express slots for 10 gigabit Ethernet or for extra SATA ports, and it also includes six SATA ports by default. Plus, with AM4 you can install pretty powerful CPU if you need that CPU power. And with this I have to finish this unboxing video. If you want to see the detailed review, then feel free to follow my main channel. It will be published there.